by rights going to leave me, but I'd like to say something to all of you. Thank you for coming. However, if you could hear yourselves, you're all saying that the pesticides are getting worse in the water. With that in mind, and with it in mind that the, the, the pesticides are poison, you all have families. If you do not go home and give it your damnedest to change this, shame on all of you. No kidding. All of you. Yeah. So the Oregon Department of Forestry um, sampling that they did, uh, it was post spray drip sampling, that did not include the um, effects of spray runoff uh, after a rain event. And there has been some additional sampling that's been done that's had LC50s uh, great enough to kill coho salmon. So this was um, LC Citizens Monitoring Project. This was an OWEB funded project about seven years ago. And we are currently cooperating on uh, three paired watershed studies. And one of them, um, they're looking at a number of effects of watershed on harvesting operations. But the TRASC is also looking at uh, the immediate runoff from what they believe are, are sediment carries of that in there, and we're starting to get some data back from that study. And so we're a cooperator on it. We're not leaving that study. So it would probably follow up on that. Yeah. Very good information. Thank you for sharing that. So I have some methodology suggestions. One simple, one not. The simple one is to make ODF and ODA a cooperating agency, but not a decision agency on this. Since you have a built-in conflict of interest, since you allow limited liability corporations to spray from helicopters these substances which cross property lines. And when I dealt with ODF in 2000, when the neighboring timber company clear cut and sprayed, couldn't even get you all to test the water when the helicopter sprayed over a creek. That was a year-round creek. And I was told at the time by the Veneta office that there was, you know, we didn't have budgets as the excuse, but we're just not going to post this information. You can subscribe to every section in the county if you really want to know the full amount that's being sprayed, but otherwise, go away, we don't want to hear you. So, you can't be a decision making agency for this study when ODA and ODF give permission to these companies to spray as much as they want, whenever they want without a full public notification of what is going on. The more complicated methodolog methodological suggestion, and I will put this in writing through the email, okay. is 20 years ago, the US-Canada International Joint Commission on the Great Lakes, which is a binational treaty organization, did a very large scientific literature survey on the impact of persistent toxic substances, such as the ones we're talking about tonight. The U.S. Chair, Gordon Durnell, had been chair of the Indiana Republican Party, friend of Dan Quayle, for all those who remember Dan Quayle. So that's his politics. It's not the politics as most of the people here. But he looked at the science and realized that if you eat fish out of the Great Lakes, you'll get brain damage because of all the toxins that build up in your food chain. And this conservative Republican came to the conclusion that environmental regulation had been a complete failure. We have to ban toxics. We have to ban classes of chemicals. Mm -hmm. We have to, because you can never study what's the synergistic interactions of all these supposedly safe levels, hundreds and hundreds of things, built-in correction systems in our immune system so that we're all not dead of cancer. Not everyone's going to get sick from that. But there is no such thing as a safe level. That is a convenience of bureaucracy. It is not a scientific yeah. fact. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're yeah. honest from a public health perspective, yeah. That is what it is. So, what the IJC recommended, and sadly both the Bush 1 and Clinton Gore administration rejected, is that you need to stop regulating, you need to ban, ban. and what they said in particular was chlorine. Most people think chlorine is drinking water, but that's 1% of chlorine. The carbon chlorine bond does not exist in mammalian biology. Let me repeat that. The carbon-chlorine chemical bond is not found in mammals. 
except through artificial means. 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid is a bunch of benzene rings from oil stuck with chlorine gas. That's basically what it is. Atrazine is the same thing. Most of these herbicides, garlon, yep. which no one's talked about tonight, which is massively sprayed, yep. it's an organochlorine. Yep. These are persistent <laughs> compounds. What the IJC found is that the carbon-chlorine bond is at the root of most of what we call toxic waste. Organophosphoric compounds, nerve gas, they're very short-lived. You either get killed or you don't. But carbon-chlorine bonds are very stable. Yeah. And they build up in the fat tissue, maybe some more than others. 245T was probably more toxic than 24D, but it's like designer drugs. Now, DDT was banned, fortunately. Dichloro, diphenyl, which is benzene rings, trichloroethane, DDT. So there's another chemical that's almost the exact same thing. It's just tweaked ever so slightly, and it's legal. You can buy it in hardware stores if they're well equipped. So you need to have a precautionary principle, and you need to stop this bullshit, part of my English, of pretending that there's a safe level when there is absolutely no way to study the interaction of all of these substances. The biologists around the world who are looking at the disappearance of frogs have mostly concluded it's the synergistic interaction of all these toxic chemicals coming together. And in terms of inert ingredients, which someone said, they could be anything. They can be hazardous waste from the back of some hazardous waste factory. It's legal. EPA does not regulate. I have a friend who works at EPA in the national office, and he laughs when he hears that EPA is doing all this stuff. Yeah, there are a lot of good people who work at EPA, but the senior management of EPA is not environmental scientists. EPA is just as corrupt as any other organization. There's good people, there's whistleblowers, like Hugh Kaufman. Um, I mean, it's like the Gandhi quote. What do you think of Western civilization? It would be a good idea. What do I think of the EPA? It would be a good idea to have one. <laughs> um, I'm just going to respond with two things. One, I, I agree with you. No credible... Toxicologists, biologists, molecular biologists, you know, whatever specialty you want to look at, will, um, will tell you that we can measure the, and account for additive effects, synergistic effects, and I'm going to throw one more out there too, which isn't going to make you happy, the antagonistic effects. If you're exposed to two chemicals, one may in fact, you know, negate the effect of the other. But quite, you're right, we don't know. Um, and secondly, um, the premise that there is no safe level of cancer, or no safe level of a carcinogen, is the fundamental underlying premise of EPA's risk assessment and cancer assessment methodology, and that there is no exposure to a carcinogen which is, that is not without some finite level of risk. That's based on exposure to radiation. In terms of exposure to chemicals, there are a lot of scientists that will argue that that's a flawed assumption. But whether or not it's a, it's a valid assumption or a flawed assumption, that is the basis under which EPA regulates carcinogens. And that's but, what the IJC said. But what EPA does do in terms of carcinogens is whether you like it or not, somewhere back in the 50s, people decided that a certain cancer risk was an acceptable level. And that is one in one million. And so that is the that is the cancer risk at which we try and base our, our regulations on. So you're right. You know, it breaks we, down on the synergistic effects. It makes it not valid and not real. We don't know. But you know, we do it on a chemical specific basis. We assume cancer is additive. If we don't really care if you're exposed to two chemicals, and one of them gives you liver cancer, and one of them gives you kidney cancer, if it's that cancer risk is what we're interested in. We're not particularly worried about which cancer it is, we just want to measure what the cancer is.